Hello, friends. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm Thomas. I'm a teacher in the Shoba Academy, Panyangara, in the district of Palakkad. Could you please give uh, your introduction, personal introduction, beginning from Anna? Anna Denny. My name is Anna Denny. I'm studying in 10th in the Sabaladrosas Public School, Devargat. I'm from the district, Ernagula. Okay, fine. Mary. <coughs> My name is Josephine Marin. I'm also in 10th from the same school. Good. Anna Ross. My name is Anna Ross, and I'm studying in the same school, Isabella de Ross's public school, 10th standard. Good. What about your preparation for the examination, board examination? Already the date sheet has been published. Have you all finished with your syllabus? Revision is going on, and we think we are trying our best to score good marks. Okay. And teachers are also working well. It's good. Let this be another revision for your upcoming term two CBSC class ten board examinations. So, in the beginning itself, all the best to all of you. Uh, would you like to play a game of quiz? Would you like to play a game of quiz? To all of you, I ask, Marine and Anna. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's start our session with a game of quiz. And I don't just disclose what I'm going to do to you. Let us, let's go and find it out. Explore yourself, fine? So I'll be sharing my screen. There'll be the questions. Questions will be there and options will be there. Uh, I'll, I'll call out the names for answering the questions. Let us see. Uh, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, is the screen visible to you clearly? Yes, sir. All right. So the title you can see here, it's Glimpses of India. And Glimpses of India, I did not tell you. Uh, various sides, sides of India. And let us begin with uh, Mary. Mary, yes, you'll have to answer the first question, right? Okay. So this is a question for you. Around 20% of the land of this state falls into the beautiful Western Ghats of India. You'll have the options here, Assam, Goa, Kerala, and Telangana. Your choice. <clears throat> Can you please repeat the question? Around 20% of the land of this state falls into this beautiful Western, Western Ghats of India. The option, Assam, Goa, Kerala, Telangana. Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see the screen. Yeah, your option. Assam, Goa, Kerala, and Telangana. Don't take too much time. I'm so confused. Ah, go, go for an option. Assam, Goa, Kerala, Telangana. I said go. Goa, let's see if Goa is the right answer. Oh my goodness, you are right. You are absolutely right. Goa is right answer. So you score a point, right? You calculate your points. I'm not going to calculate it. Marine. Okay. okay. And now, next is your choice. So here's the second question. Goa is the Dutch state in India. The options are largest, newest, oldest, and smallest. <clears throat> Anna Denny. Smallest. Smallest? smallest is the year option. Yeah, you are also right. Absolutely right. You score a point here. I know the chance goes to Anna Rose, right? Yes, sir. Now, here is, here is your question. Goa was the colony of Dash. Portugal, Britain, Spain, Argentina. Portuguese. 
Portugal is the option you have, not the Portuguese. Portugal? Would they like to lock it? But I'll go to Portuguese. Goa was the colony of Dash. Portugal, Britain, Spain, Argentina. Your option. Portuguese. Okay, Portugal. I take it as Portugal. Let us see. You are also right. So in the first round, all of his score, you have a perfect score. All Marine and uh, 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 Rini and uh, uh, Ross all have scored one point each. Let's move to the next question. Again, Marine gets a chance. Here is the fourth question. The Portuguese ruled over Goa for almost dash years. 250, 450, 550, 350. Mary. 250. Uh, I'm not aware of this. Uh, let us see. Would you like to lock it? Yeah, 250. Let's, let's go for 250. Oh, no, you are wrong. Now the chance goes to Anna Delhi. You can have your choice. 350. Let's see. 350. Oh, no. There you are wrong again. <clears throat> Anaros. Now two options remain. 550 and 450. Your choice. I'll go with 550. 550. Oh, all of you went wrong. So the right answer is... What's the right answer? 450. For almost 450 years, Goa was under Portuguese too, right? So next, I mean, next chance goes to another name. So I scored a point right there. Another name. When did yes, Goa become independent? When did Goa become independent? 19 December 1961, 15 August 1947, 26 January 1950, 1st November 1957. Sir, can you repeat the options? 19 December 1961, 15 August 1947, 26 January 1950, 1st November 1957. Sir, option A, 19 December. 19 December 1961 is the year. Would you like to lock it? Yes, sir. It's just a guess. 1961. Are you sure? Are you sure? No. Not sure. Still, you lock it. Let's see. Oh, luck. There was the way. So you are right. And you scored another point. You are right. Goa became, Goa became independent in the year 1961. Okay, next question goes to Anna Ross. Which is the largest waterfall in Goa? Chipkun, Angel, Dud Sagar, Margo. So can you repeat it? Which is the largest waterfall in Goa? Chipkun, Angel, Dud Sagar, Margo. Your option? Kick. Hello. Sire, so I am not able to see the screen. Okay, what happened? Anyway, you go for the option. Okay. Chipkun, uh, Chipkun, uh. Chipkun, Angel, Dud Sagar, Madga. It's a guess. I'll go do Sagar. Do Sagar. Let's see. Oh, again, luck favor the brain. Yeah, your guess is right. And let all your guesses be right. Okay, and now use this for another point. And who's is the next turn? Or is it uh, oh, another one joined here? Ashik. Ashik. Hello, Ashik. 
Yes. Okay. The chance was to ask it now. It's your turn to answer, right? It is a question. Yes. Which is the official which is the official language of Goa? Hindi, English, Portuguese, Kangani. Portuguese. Portuguese. Would you like to lock it? Check. Would you like to lock it? Yes. Oh no, you are wrong there. Della, you get the chance. Sir Kongani. Kongani. Ah, you are you are right, Della. Kongani is the right answer. Now, again, as uh, you came late, you get another chance. Is it Ashik? Yes. Ashik. Ashik, you get one more chance. Name the capital city of Goa. Panaji, Vasco, Madga, Kanakona. So one more day. Ashik. The capital city of Goa. Panaji, Vasco, Madgao, Kanakona. Kyuk, you need to be Kyuk. We lose our time. Vasco. Vasco is what you say. Okay, let's see, Vasco. No, Ashik, you are wrong. Della, Della, you can take the chance. Yes, sir. Pananchi. Pananchi. Yeah, you are right. So you score another point. So now uh, I would like to give next chance to uh, Anna Rose. We have two more questions. Who is the governor of Goa? P.S. Sridharan Pillai, Pramod Savant, Antonia D'Souza, Romario Cristo. So options, please. Option? Options, please, one more time. Antonia de Sousa. Sir, could you repeat all the options one more time? P.S. Sridharan Pilla, Pramod Savant, Antonia de Sousa, and uh, Romario Cristo. Sir, I'll go with option B. Pramod Savant. Yes, it's nearly a guess, but I'll okay. go with it. Oh, now your guess goes wrong. That's the wrong answer. So now, Anna, who is the next one now? We have Anna Delhi. Yes, sir. I think it's option A. P.S. Sridharan Pilla, a Malayali. Is it? Yes, sir. You are right, you are right, you are right. Absolutely right. Good guy. So now the last chance, once again to Ashik. And this is the last question. The last question, when was the state of Goa formed? 1961, 1947, 2004, 1987. Ashik. 1961. Sorry? 1961. 1961 is the wrong answer, Ashik. Now, Della, you get the chance. So, can you please repeat the question? When was the state of Goa formed? 1961, 1947, 2004, 1987. So, the last option, it's nearly a guess. Nine. <laughs> 1987. <laughs> so, you are. Uh, I think you are very good at guessing, and this guess may be right or wrong. I don't know. Let us see. Oh, you are right. That's fantastic. Ella. So the quiz comes to an end here. We were just having a tour with Goa, just learning about Goa, because we are going to revise the first part of Glimpses of India, which is a baker from Goa. By now you must have come to know that, I guess. Is my guess right? 
Yes, sir. Yes. So, dear students, we are going through the chapter A Baker from Goa. Okay. Okay, sir. So now I'll be sharing another PowerPoint presentation uh, to take you through the bakeries of Goa. Okay. Um, Okay, can you see the screen now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Marie, Anna, Della, anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's clear, clearly visible. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. It's clear. Ashik. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you yes, all sir. are muted, the students. All of you are muted, please. One of you turn on the mic and speak. No? Hear you. Yes, sir, we can hear your voice. Um, I can't hear alone. So you're audible to us. Okay. So can you hear us? Yeah, 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 right. It's perfect now. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Okay. So, chapter seven, Lunses of India, part one, the baker from a baker from Goa. Now, I'll be showing a few pictures. Just identify the picture. Anyone can answer, right? It's the first one. Can anybody say what this is? So we are not able to see this. So next screen, we are not able to see the text. Yes, sir, first page. You are not able to see? It's the first page. All, what about others? Ashik, Della? Yes, sir, we can't see, we can't see. Sir, what's happening there? I don't understand the screen. Uh, no, we are only able to uh, see the first page itself. Oh. Now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the page? Or only yes, the first sir. page? Only the first no. page? No, no, second page. How is it now? Yes, sir. It's yeah, please. Please identify the picture. First one is selling fish, yes, sir. Oh, that means of uh, fish hawker. 
Is it? Yes, sir. Right. This one? Second one, vegetable, I think. Car is vegetable. Is it a vegetable hawker? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Della? Yes, sir. How many pictures do you see on the screen? Four pictures. Four. So my screen and your screen are different. That's the problem. I don't know how it happens. Okay, four pictures. I think we'll have to go this way now. So the first one is a fish hawker, second one, a vegetable vendor. And the third one on the left side, What's that? Is it newspapers? Yeah, yep. a newspaper man. And the last one? Ice cream shop. Okay, it's an ice cream seller. Right, see these are some of the common scenes of our city or villages. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yes. What do these yes. people? Do? What do these people do, or what? What is our connection with these people? Most of them come to our house. That's it. Most of them are frequent visitors to our villages or maybe our houses. Likewise, there was a time in Goa when the bakers visited each and every house. We don't generally see that in our area because uh, bakers do not come to our houses, but these people do, don't they? What do you say, don't they? Hello? Uh... See, these people, a vegetable vendor, a fish hawker, a newspaper man, ice cream seller, at least a few of them frequently visit our villages and houses. That means they are commonly seen in our streets. Am I right? Yes, sir. So likewise, there was a time in Goa when a baker or a baker's visited each house. And that was during the Portuguese times. That's why we had a few questions about Portuguese. So the Goban people's life was integrally connected with the life of a baker. They could not think about a life without a baker. That's what we are going to see the connection or the relationship of a baker with the people of Goa. A few years ago, many, many years ago, and even today. Okay. If I go with the presentation, I don't think that you will be able to see my screen. So I'll go, I'll select each slides. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So now uh, let's see a few details of the order. A baker from Goa, the order is Lucio Rodriguez, he was born in 1916 and died in 1973. He was a great Congolese. So earlier I asked you a question the official language of Govins. What's the official language of Govins? Kongani. Sorry? Kongani. Kongani. So he was a great Kongani essayist. He wrote several articles in English and Kongani to various periodicals and magazines. He served as a visiting professor of folklore at many universities and also as a professor of English in Mumbai and Goa. Essays posthumously published. His essays were posthumously published. What do you mean by posthumously? Posthumously, 
after death. Okay, what's the Muslim means? After death. After death. Essays, his essays were posthumously published under the title of Soil and Soul and Congeny Folk Tales. And his writings had subtle humor and informal narrations. These are the essential features of his writings. So he was a very famous Congeny writer. And he writes about the baker's life in Goa. So if I show, you, show my screen, would you be able to read? Are you able to read this? Yes, yes sir. sir. So one of the students, please. A baker from Goa. Our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good, good old Portuguese days. Portuguese and their famous loaves of bread. Those eaters of loaves might have vanished, but the makers are still there. We still have amongst us the makers, the modelers, and those who bake the loaves. Those age old, time tested furnace still exist. The fire in the furnace has not yet been extinguished. The thud and jingle of the traditional <coughs> bakers, bamboo, heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places. Maybe the father is not alive, but the son still carries on the family profession. These bakers are even today known as padder in Goa. Okay, so from this, what do we understand? The first, this is the first paragraph of our chapter. So here, the writer clearly portrays the relationship of a baker and the old governments. See so his page. Our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically. So let us let us see a few uh, words which may be quite new to you. What do you mean by this? Reminiscing nostalgically. It's thinking fondly of the past. What do you mean by nostalgia? Thinking uh, about the past. No, no. Reminiscing means think. Nostalgia. Have you heard this word? No, nostalgia is actually, we can say it's homesickness. So they are nostalgic to the elders. The Goavans are nostalgic about the old, good Portuguese days. So you know, India was under British rule. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Then yes, how, could this, how could this Portuguese control Goa? Have you got any idea? Why is this or Portuguese days? What is this Portuguese days? Can any, anybody comment? If not, please say no. So I'll tell you. No, sir. Right. See, the whole of India was not under British rule. You have learned in history, that's why we already had in our introduction quiz uh, questions about Portugal, and Goa was under Portuguese rule, etc. The whole of India was not under Portuguese rule, but most of India, I mean, British rule, but most of India had been under British rule. There were a few areas, a few colonies or regions, even, uh, you know, small islands that were under the rule of other European powers such as Portugal, Spain, Holland, etc. You know, the Britishers left India in the year 1947, didn't they? Didn't they? Yes. Uh, that means India yeah. got freedom in the year 1947. But did all the Indians get freedom in the same year, 1947? No. No. The Portuguese did not leave Goa, Damanandu, etc. 
Have you heard of Damon and Jim? Yes. Yeah. That's it. See that it's a group of pilots, Damon and Jim. And then what happened? Again, the people revolted against them, and the Indian Union, Indian forces fought against. I mean, first they asked the Portuguese to leave, but they were not ready. They continued in Portuguese till 1961, and then the Indian forces fought against them, and the Portuguese were forced to leave Goa, and Goa became independent. That was in there 1961. Was Goa and state formed then in 1961? No, it was a union territory. Later, Goa got the status of a state that we saw in the year 1984. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So what are these all Portuguese days? All Portuguese days means when Goa was under the rule of the Portuguese. Got it? Yes, yes. That means 60 or 70 years ago. So people think nostalgically about those days. Was it that the Portuguese were better than the Indians? Was it? No. They are thinking fondly about the famous loaves of bread, which they can never forget. Clear? Yes. So that means bread was closely connected with the lives of governments even today. Got the point? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now let's see the important words here, reminiscing nostalgically, which means thinking fondly of the past. Vanished, of course, you know the meaning, vanished means disappeared. Molder, who is a molder? A person who molds dough into a shape. You know, uh, to prepare bread, you need different shapes of bread. So you need to mold it, got it? You need to shape it. So a person who shapes, is known as Molda. Clear? Yes. And we have another word here, furnace. What do you mean by furnace? It's an enclosed structure in which the materials can be heated to very high temperature. Can anybody say an equivalent uh, word in Malayalam, furnace? Furnace? In Malayalam, we... we we call it chula. Have you heard chula? No. Okay. Furnace means that. Okay. Here anyway, here it's the oven. Oven. The natural oven in which the bread is baked. Clear? Yes. Extinguished. You might know it. Extinguished means come to an end. Cause a fire to cease to burn. A fire ceasing to burn is not extinguished. Clear? Yes. yes. And another word is the thud. What is thud? A dull, heavy sound. That's a sound. Another word is heralding, which means announcing. Herald means announce. And uh, Another word here is pado. Pado. Pado means that's a word for baker in Portuguese language. Is it okay with the words? Are you okay? Are you okay with the words? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's see the important points here. What is there given in the first paragraph? It was about the time when Goa was under the rule of the Portuguese. I told you, till 61, the Portuguese were ruling over Goa. So it could be any time, till 1961. So here, the writer, the writer has heard, I mean, even the narrators, the writer's elders often recall the time, they always remember the time when Goa was under the rule of Portuguese. 
I told you, it's not because the Portuguese were excellent rulers or they liked the rule of the Portuguese, not that. Why? The importance of bakers is still maintained in their village. So that's the indication given there. What's that? The furnaces, the molders, the bakers are still alive in Goa. Post-independent Goa. Do you get me? Yes, sir. Okay. And the bakers in Goa are known as father. That means even they have taken the Portuguese name for them. The mixers, molders, and the time-tested furnaces, the old furnaces, I told you the natural oven, that has been built many, many years ago, are still there in Goa. As a monument, you can say, I don't know if I could say the monument, but something like that. That means the mixers, the people who mixes the flour, the people who molds it into shape, and the furnaces in which the bread, cakes are baked, are still there in Goa. The original ones may not exist. That means the bakers, the original bakers who were there, who had been there in the Portugal, Portuguese Goa may not be there, but their profession is being continued by their sons. That means still there are bakers who follow their tradition. So baking has become a traditional job in Goa. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move to the next part. Have you got any, anything to ask from the first part? Anybody? Any no, doubt? Sir. Okay. Now another student, please read. During our childhood in Goa, the baker used to be our friend, companion, and guide. He used to come at least twice a day. When once when he sat out in the morning on his selling round, and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket. The jingling thud of his bamboo woke us up from the sleep and we ran to meet and greet him. Why was it so? Was it for the love of the law? Not at all. The laws were bought by some paskin or bastin, the maid servant of the house. What we longed for were those bread bangles, which we chose carefully. Sometimes it was sweet bread of special made. Okay, thank you. Good trade. So now uh, the important words here, Askan or Bastain is quite uh, unfamiliar word for us. Askan and Bastain, actually, they could be the names of the maid servants in Goa. Okay, Askan or Bastain, they call it, I mean, maid servants. They could be the names of the maid servants. So some Askan and Bastain, which only means some maid servant. Clear? Yes, sir. Companion. Companion means a friend, you know, a person with whom one spends a lot of time and jingling shows or indicates the sound. The sound, a light metallic ringing sound is jingling. Jingle bells, jingle bells you are familiar with. Aren't you? Yes, yes or no? Yeah. Now let's see what was there in this paragraph. So here, this paragraph shows the baker's relationship with the children or how closely the baker was connected to the children or how the children liked the baker. Now, the baker has been said to be the children's friend, companion, and guide. Don't forget those three words. That means children liked the baker very much. It's not only because 
they got bread from the baker. They consider him as a friend, as a companion, and even a guide. A guide, you know, one who a guide is one who guides the person, leads the person, gives him moral values, shows him the way. So the children wanted to learn a lot many things from the baker. And the baker visitor, or even you could say the visit the baker came to their houses twice a day. One in the morning when he sets out for his selling route. And second time while he's returning. And while he's returning, what happens? His basket is empty. 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 And see this, the children used to wake up hearing the thud of his bamboo. The children as we have set alarms to get up early in the morning uh, to have a look at our textbook or notebook, something like that. In those days, children needed no alarm to get up. The children got up hearing the thud of his bamboo. As the baker arrived, the sound of his you know, bamboo staff made the children get up from their bed. And what would they do then? They would run out to meet him and greet him, not only to meet him, they wanted to, they wanted to greet him. How do you greet others? By wishing them. How do you wish them? Good morning. Good evening. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, in the morning, good morning. Early in the morning, good morning, right? That's what we do. And they, of course, wished him. And then the children love this bread banquet. That's a particular bread. The children loved bread bangers. Bread bangers, bread in the shape of bangers. That's all. Clear? Yes, sir. And they also loved a sweet bread of special make. So two kinds of bread, one bread bangers and some kind of sweet bread, which is specially made for the children. These are the favorite uh, bread of the children. Okay. So you can see on the screen, bread bangers. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Any question? No. no, sir. Let's move to the next paragraph. Another student, please. The baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jang jang sound of a specially made bamboo stuff. One hand supported the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo on the ground. He would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo. We kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant. But we would not give up. We would climb the bench or the parapet and peep into the basket. Somehow, I can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves. Loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children. Then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly. And why should we? Who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush? And why was it necessary at all? The tiger never brushed his teeth, how he could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, in the, when we talked about the other, we, we talked about one of his qualities of writing. What was that? Do you remember? Humor. Humor. So that's the humor element you can see towards the end of this paragraph. Don't you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't explain it. Uh, if you go for more explanation, we lose our time. So let's go for the word power here, which was bread bangles. You saw that. And now, Bamboo staff is another word. This is symbol bamboo, a bamboo stick. And another word is parapet, different kinds of parapet. 
you can see the words, parapet words. Clear? Got it? I need not explain the meaning as I show you. And said in other words, rebuke, you know, rebuke, an expression of disapproval and scolding. A minute scolding is called rebuke. Fragrance, you know it, I need to explain. And peep, what do you mean by peep? Look quickly. Look quickly and furtively at something. Furtively means secretly. Okay, especially through a narrow opening. It's peep. Uh, I don't think that there are many other difficult words. Let's go for the explanation. So now in this paragraph, what is mainly explained is the entry of the baker. The baker has a musical entry. What is that musical entry? What's that? When the baker comes to the villagers, I already told you the children used to wake up hearing the thud of the baker's bamboo staff. And this third of the bamboo staff was a rhythmic one. It could be a rhythmic one. And that rhythm brings the music. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Does the baker play any music here? Say sorry. Does he play any music? No. No. He Def definitely not. You may have seen the harvesting machines. Have you seen in Kerala? Now, uh, this, this is the season. We find a lot of harvesting machines. Have you seen the harvesting machines? Yes. Yeah. In our fields, we see the harvest machine. And when these machines harvest the crops, cut the, cut, cut the crops, you know, the drivers, they spend their time listening to music. Um, you know, some music is loudly played. That doesn't mean the harvesting machine produces the music, but the music is produced by the loudspeaker. <clears throat> Got it? Yes, yeah, yes, sir. And the baker doesn't play any music. <clears throat> but his movements itself is music. Is that clear to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how do the bakers come? The bakers come in the village in the morning, early in the morning, and children used to get up. They used to make a sound of the bamboo. And the same that can still be heard in some places of the village. So we talk about the bakers in Portuguese days. But even today, this sound is heard. That means the same profession, the same traditional manner is carried out in Goa even today. Got it? Yes. The same jingling thud would wake the narrator and the other children, his friends. What would they do? They would go running to him and it is said, they didn't even mind to brush their teeth. Do you do that? Do you go out of your house without brushing your teeth early in the morning? No. Definitely not. Immediately after waking up, what do we do? We take the brush, paste, and we brush our teeth. Don't we? Yeah. But in those days when the bakers arrived, children even didn't mind to brush their teeth. And the writer says, the narrator says here, who would, who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaves? We can understand those days, the children used to brush their teeth using what? Mango leaves. Mango leaves. And he said, who would mind it? I mean, who would take the trouble? They didn't take the trouble. It was a trouble for them. Because that would stop. If you, if you go for brushing your teeth, plucking the mango leaves, it will waste your time. Some days you may not be able to meet the baker. 
So they didn't have that much patience. They definitely wanted to meet the baker as early as possible, so they ran out. And what would they do? They, I mean, who would receive the bread? Usually the maid servant. That's what some pastor and master only said. So some maid servant. The children didn't receive the bread. It was the duty of the maid servant to receive the bread. And what would the children do? They used to sort out the bread bankers for themselves. They would go and find out the bread bankers. And the baker used to greet the lady of the house with good morning. Baker used to greet them, greet the ladies, ladies of each house with good morning. Right? Yes, sir. Have you got any question? No, sir, it's clear. This picture explains one thing. I just I, I didn't explain that to you. You know that how the basket is balanced on bamboo. Did you see that? Did you see the picture? Yes. yes. This this is how they balance the bamboo on a single bamboo stuff. Okay. Yes, sir. Another student, please. Marriage gives our meaning less without the sweet bread known as the bowl. Just as a party or a feast closes its song without bread. Not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village. The lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasions of her daughter's engagement. Cakes and bowling hers are, made, are a must for Christmas as well as other, other visitors. Thus, the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolute, absolutely essential. Right. So in this paragraph, we come to know how bread has become a part of Goblin culture. Okay. Now, certain say words here, you know, ball. This is what is ball. And we'll explain different types of ball. Ball is a kind of soft, sweet bread as large as a dish. Okay. And you have uh, bolinas here, a kind of classic goblin cookies, ball and bolinas. By saying this, you can very easily understand. Continue. Yes, sir. Now, how has bread become the part of goblin culture? So now, the bakery products had become the part of the culture and traditions of Goa. And this culture still continues. And they have different varieties of bread. And they have different traditional values. How do we know the traditional values? The presence of different types of bread at different occasions. Now, we have a, a, a name a special sweet bread, ball. And what is its importance? A marriage gift is incomplete without ball. So ball was used as a very important marriage gift. And sandwiches, an integral part in engagements, cakes and bolinas, Wellness explanation is that cognate cookies, they are a must on Christmas. So we know here also, when we celebrate Christmas, we don't have bolinas, but what is a must? What's a must in Christmas? Christmas celebration. For us, cakes, cakes definitely. Onam? Or a sadhya. Sadhya, paisa. If we single out one thing, right? You agree? Yes. Okay. So all these occasions make the presence of baker in every village very essential. So they said, see, this many, these are the important occasions, a marriage, uh, engagement, Christmas, celebration, feast, etc. So what happens during all these occasions? You need some kind of bread. It's not any type of bread, but there are special variety of bread being prepared for 
each occasion. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So another one, please. Anybody here? Anybody? The baker or bread seller of those days had a particular dress known as kabai. It was a single piece of long cloth, cloth reaching down to the knees. In our childhood, we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers, which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants. Even today, anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites the comment that he dressed like a padder. Padder. It's powder, not powder, but the uh, powder. Okay. So this paragraph clearly shows us the dress the baker used to wear those days. I mean, ancient times during Portuguese days, and then how it changed later. So you can see the dress. This is called kabai, a single piece long frog reaching down the knees. So this was the traditional dress of baker during Portuguese days. But later, the kabai changed to shirt and uh, three-fourth, you can say, in a uh, for a better understanding, a three-fourth. What do you call this a three-fourth? Yes. Yeah. So it's a long trousers, which is uh, longer than, I mean, which re reaches, um, it's, it's longer than the knees, but not of full length, right? Yes. So today you might have seen even boys and girls wearing pants like this, three fourth. So you can all call them what? What? Pad. Okay. Huh? But when you call them, just protect your face and your body so that you don't get beaten by them, right? Yes. Okay, so the dress. Earlier, the bakers wore a unique frock of knee length known as kabai, and during the narrator's childhood days, later it changed its form. During the narrator's childhood days, this, their dress, I mean, the dress of the baker was a shirt and trousers and the trousers of length slightly shorter than the usual ones. Let us call it three-fourth. Okay. Yes. Another one quickly. The baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall and pencil. Baking was indeed a profitable pro profession in the old days. The baker and his family never starved. He, his family, and his servants always looked happy and prosperous. Their plan to skew was an open testimony to this. Even today, any person with a jackfruit-like physical appearance is easily compared to a baker. So that's the last paragraph, I guess, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the last one. Okay, here, two things are mentioned. One, how the baker maintained the account. Second, how happy and prosperous the baker was. Let's go through the words. A plum physic is a word here. What do you mean a plum physic? Pleasantly fat body. You can see, as you see uh, in this picture, a plum physic. Should I explain? Should I explain that? No. No, sorry. Now, open testimony. Testimony. It's a public statement about a character or quality. Testimony. What is that name? I mean, what's the meaning of that particular word? Testimony. It's a statement. A statement of what you have seen, what you have experienced is called testimony. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Prosperous, you know, flourishing financially. So these are the important words. Now, how did they record the bills? How did they maintain an account? Today, you know, you see all the shops have uh, computers or even, you know, uh, 
the street vendors, they have a notebook or diary, something they're noted down. But during Portuguese days, the bakers had a peculiar way of recording the bills. How? The baker had a way of making mandala records of bills. How did, what did they do? They marked it or they wrote it on a wall, a kind of wall, whichever wall they find near the house, maybe the wall of the house, they wrote the account with a pencil and they collected money monthly. Clear? They used yes. to record it on some walls and they collected the bills monthly. So they, they didn't collect money daily. It was a monthly collection, right? Yes. Okay. Now, how was the profession? Bakery has continued to be a profitable profession. And the baker's family, they enjoyed happiness and joy. They were always prosperous. Not only the baker's family, even their workers, always, they, even the workers were also happy and joyous. And how do we know that? We know that from their physical appearance. How was their physical appearance? They were usually fat. How was their physical appearance? They were usually yes. fat. Yes. When we see a fat man or fat lady, it may be due to some illness, but we, what, what, would we, what would we say? Oh, they are eating too much. Don't we? Yes. Yeah. And here, that's a testimony, a proof that they had been rich and prosperous is their fat body. It's a proof that he had a lot to eat and hence a rich person. So even today, if somebody sees a person in the appearance of jackfruit, we also call it jackfruit-like appearance, don't we? So when somebody says a well-built person, they compare him to a baker. So baker's life was, he enjoyed a happy, joyous, prosperous, peaceful life. Clear? Yes, sir. So now we went through the culture and tradition influence of society here, time surpasses. But what happens? The culture still remains. Tradition also exists. There may be some variation. And of course, our country is very rich in variety of traditions and culture. We have a country which has unity in, completed. Unity in diversity. diversity. Let's quickly go through the important points. Uh, we had uh, not many things to discuss, but time doesn't permit us. So let's go through a quick review. The important points, you know, a baker from Goa revolves around the relevance of a baker in Goan culture, which dates back to the time when Portuguese ruled over the city of Goa. The Portuguese have left, but the bread makers still continue. The mixers, molders, and the furnaces, they are still there in Goa. And here, the author recalls his childhood days and the excitement on seeing the baker. The children were enthusiastic to the point that they would run to meet him early in the morning without even brushing their teeth. And they used to talk how, I mean, they talk how the importance of bakers is still maintained in their village, even after the purchase of left. The bakers are known as father in Goa. And usually the maid servants collected the loaves of the bread and children loved bread bankers. Bakery products, bakery items have importance in the culture and traditions of Goa. We have some names, ball, a sweet bread is a part of marriage gift. 
cakes and bolinas, a must for Christmas, and sandwich is unavoidable at daughter's engagement. And the bakers wore a unique frock of knee length, which is known as kabai. But during night, I mean, the righteous childhood days, they wore a shirt and trousers. And the bills were generally collected at the end of the month, and the bills were recorded on some boards. And baking was a profitable profession because the bakers and the servants led a happy, joyous, and prosperous life. Their physical appearance was a, an open testimony to their prosperity. So that's all from the baker, from a baker from Goa. Have you got anything to ask me? No, sir. Any question for any clarification? All clear. So you have nothing to ask? So you have an assignment. Just note down these questions. And if you can, please answer it. It may help you during your examination. So the first question, compare your childhood with that of the writer and write a nostalgic note about a frequent visitor of your village. So I showed you a few frequent visitors. You can have any, any, other, any other person. A common visitor. It's not a visitor to your house, but a visitor to your village, right? Second question. How did the bakers become synonymous with celebrations and occasions in Goa? You may mention the names of different bread and their connection with the occasions. The first one, of course, you need to write about of this, maybe a vegetable vendor, how uh, important he is to your village, or do the children like them? Do the elders like them? You can write it from your own experience. Got it? And third one. What are the unavoidable dishes in your celebrations? Write a recipe of one of them. So you learned the different types of bread, which were integral part of Govan culture and tradition. So we also have certain important dishes, as you said, cakes for Christmas, sadhya or paisam, turi onam, and uh, I, I don't know how many. See, uh, you may find many dishes which are unavoidable in different occasions. So just mention those names and one recipe. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall we put an end to this session? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not so happy because none of you asked me any question. The session was very clear for us. Okay.